you sorry sir see there's one that's having a bit of a mud wallow over there there we go more on the left as well ah so it is our herd from this morning that is all just spread across and it looks like some of them are still making their way to the water others have already drank and we know it's quite a big herd so I would imagine that we're going to see a few more arriving just now and that one's busy playing with a stick a young male what are you doing definitely sounds like more of them coming which is fantastic news Christine you're wondering if the tusks continue to grow throughout their lifetime yes they do but don't forget they also get worn down throughout their lifetime so as they go so those tusks are getting worn and blunter as they're being used so even though they do continue to grow there is some wear and tear that happens that will limit that amount of growth it also is genetics as well some elephants will have tusks that grow quicker than others and thicker than others it's not always that every elephant is going to get big long tusks as there's a bit of genetics involved with it but they do grow out throughout their life what are you doing? So I believe when they rock their foot like that, it's a little bit of indecision as they're not 100% sure which way they want to go. So they wait until they've got some backup or just throwing sticks on top of their head. Apparently is also what you do when you have your foot up and it's resting a little bit. But when they rock like that, it's just a bit indecisive as to what they do. You can see he's had a dust bath today. as well. got a nice white dust all over his head. Hello, young boy. Here comes another one, and there's still quite a few to our left-hand side, so I would imagine they're all slowly but surely coming down for a drink. But it is a beautiful scene. It's calm, it's quiet. Are you going to come say hello? Oh, here they are. They're closing in now. We're in trouble, Seb. Look at these two cheeky elephants. <laughs> Alicia, you say party at the waterhole? Well, it looks like it, although it looks like we've been ganged up upon by these two. You see how the posture is with both of them. Ears out, heads slightly raised. So they're now coming towards us just to come and see what we are and who we are. Typical of a young male. He wants to know what's going on. He's looking Harry Casual with his foot over the top of the other one. And the one on the left, the slightly older one. What, are you, what do you want? Don't come and give us trouble. We've done nothing to you. Behave yourself. So look at the posture. You see how she's w trying to make herself bigger? He, sorry, is trying to make himself bigger and is trying to threaten us. But because we're standing our ground and he's young, he's not 100% sure about this whole thing. And that's why now moving off a little bit is going to go back towards the herd. If it was a big old male and it was showing that posture, there's a very different story. These youngsters, you've got to teach them a little bit. You've got to show them that you are not scared of them and that you don't have worry about them and you sit and wait and just sit it out and eventually that's what happens as they learn not to come near you and they go off and back down to the water but you can see they've dug a massive hole where that male is there he's thrown mud all over himself but there's a nice deep hole at the base of the feet that he's busy pulling mud out of and they've dug that by the looks of it with their feet for water to seep through so there'll be nice clean water in there and then once they've drank they then start to throw mud and get it all muddy and collapse soil in there and then that's what he's thrown all over his body you can see look how dark he is in coloration and there's bits of mud sticking to him all over the place sleep you saying you wonder if the Ellies know how much they are loved by us I don't know I suppose not really they don't really know that because generally they're absolutely petrified of humans on foot and see us as a predator because of all the years of persecution that they've had so in vehicles they know that we're not really a threat but they do definitely are not seeing us as part of the family I mean we we are an object that is in the herd sometimes and they accept it because we don't really do anything but on foot is a very different situation on foot they see people and humans as a potential dangerous animal and something that they need to be very wary of so you won't find them being too friendly to us on foot
Swister, you're wondering if an elephant could ever cause serious damage if you were attacked by them. Uh, the answer to that is a resounding yes. In fact, it's not just serious damage, they will cause death. If you are to get manhandled by an elephant, you are not going to generally survive an in altercation like that. Elephants, when they get hold of people, is a very ugly situation. Even when they get hold of cars, there are a number of videos on the internet if you want to go and check it out about elephants rolling cars and squashing cars and all kinds of other things. So they are extremely, extremely dangerous on foot and something you've got to be very wary of. And you'll find that they, if they get hold of you, then you're in a lot of trouble. You're not going to come out of it very nicely. And even if you do survive, you're going to have all kinds of big problems. That animal is hugely powerful. It is immensely strong, much stronger than what we are. And our bodies are like a little rag doll to them if they get hold of us. And, and it's really not a pleasant situation. I know of a couple people that have been killed by elephants. And I can tell you it's not a very pleasant experience. And if you want to know just how unpleasant it is, you can ask one of our presenters, Brent Leo Smith, because he was hit by an elephant in Gabon, a forest elephant, which are much smaller than these savanna elephants. And it certainly did a bit of damage to him. He had a badly dislocated hip. And so he'll be able to tell you just how unpleasant being manhandled by an elephant is. I wonder what he's doing, this elephant. It almost looks like he's wetting the bank to make mud that he can then potentially rub on. What are you, you see, he's sprayed water all along there and he's sniffing along. What are you doing? Are you watering the garden? Very strange. I've never seen an elephant actually do this. It's almost like he's making his own little mudslide. He's not really drinking, as you can see. There's not exactly a huge amount of water being sucked up and put inside the mouth. It's mostly just being thrown onto the bank. Look, there we go. What are you doing? That's super interesting. Natural, are you asking if he could be trying to eat some of the soil and the minerals? It's possible that he could be doing that. I think, however, what he's actually doing is taking the surface tension off the water and then pushing that onto the soil as getting rid of all of the dust and dirt that's on top of the water and then he's drinking the nice clean water that's left. So you see, look, he sprays that stuff out and then once he's sprayed a little bit, then he pushes water into the mouth. So I think he's just getting rid of all the dirty water that he first sucks up and the sediment and then pushing nice water into his mouth. <laughs> you say you think he's building a sandcastle. I like that idea. I suppose when you young children down at the waterhole in the muddy areas, they're going to make little sandcastles, and that's maybe what he's doing. It would be nice. Imagine if he did build a sandcastle. It would be very clever, wouldn't it? I reckon an elephant sandcastle would look quite good. You can see a number of other elephants starting to arrive now. We're getting lots and lots and lots of them coming through. There's a lot of babies that are going to come through just now as well. This is the first part. The rest are still in the bush, but are slowly but surely heading down in this direction. So they're going to be with us fairly soon. So they obviously came down for a drink during midday. Then they went off to feed, and now they're back again. This is the same herd we had this morning, that big herd that we had. It's exactly the same sort of composition of them, and I've recognized a couple of these individuals from earlier. You can see they're actually having a mud wallow now. You can hear him slurping up the mud and spraying it. There we go. Digging out a little bit of that soil. There we go. This will all be to help cool down as well as to create a protective layer for those biting flies and various parasites. And like I say, cooling down is probably the biggest reason. You see how he sprays behind his ears up onto the chest area because that's where all the thinnest skin is and where it will cool down the quickest. Deadhead, you say you love elephant personalities. They are the best, aren't they? They've got so much sort of spunk and so much attitude and, and, and personality to all of them. And each one's different. Each one has got its own kind of uniqueness and they really are an incredible animal. When I spend time in Kenya with all those orphans, each one has its own persona and its own way of doing things. They are, some of them, very naughty. Others are shy and reclusive. Others are playful. It just depends on the individual. It's really amazing how different they actually all are and how each one is very much like people and completely unique in the way that they go about their day and their business. 
is magical sitting here at this time of the day. It's that sunset period. We actually have a beautiful big red disc of sun going down on our left hand side. It is a wonderful, wonderful scene. So there that is. And then it's quiet. There's Ellie's all around us. There's a prospect of potentially a cheetah arriving at some point, which would be amazing. So imagine if we had a cheetah arrive on the other bank and start drinking with these elephants that would be a turn up for the books so there's lots going on and it is just so pretty being out here and quiet pleasant isn't it Seb Very. a lovely way to spend a Sunday afternoon that's for sure it's a perfect 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 way to relax on a Sunday and our Sun is slowly but surely going down I reckon it will be down in the next two three minutes I think we'll see that it's going to go beyond the horizon as the rest of our herd slowly but surely arrives. Let's just go forward a little bit because we can maybe watch the rest of them that are feeding and starting to come out as well. I was thinking about going down to where they've got that mud wallow but then I remembered that elephants throw mud a long way away so I don't really want to go get covered in mud so I probably won't head too far that direction but what we will do is there's a little path here and we can then just park and we can watch them from on top as well as all the others that will start coming past us. Come on, Rusty. Over the bump. We're just going to park ourselves over here, just on top of the bank. There we go. So we're going to sit with our elephants. Sorry, Seb, I know it's a bit skew and lopsided, but this is where we're going to at least enjoy watching them as they Sort of drink around us and have a little feed. I believe a lot of you are just saying how much you love spending time with these Ellies and we are so fortunate, particularly here in the sands where we get these intimate up close encounters and they all around us and just how relaxed they are. They they are so tolerant of us. Look at this little one trying to get into the hole. Don't fall. Oh oops. I thought we might see a head plant into the hole. What is it with the young individuals? Hosanna yesterday shoving his head down the hole at the termite mound. And now our little Ellie also. I feel like we're going to get one or two of the tiny babies arriving and they might disappear down that hole, which would be quite entertaining to watch because there will probably be a bit of screaming. You can't fit in there. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, there goes the mud bath for everybody else. It's too small for you to sit in there. You can't sit. It's not going to stop me trying is basically what's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> but if you were wondering when exactly uh, myself and Byron were going to join the scene and run into the mud wallow since we've got our mud wrestling match coming up and we need to get into training. Well Byron's not here so I don't want to get any unfair advantage over him. If we're training we're going to have to train you know at the same time. I can't get all my techniques down pat and not give him a chance to train although he is in the Timbavati game reserve so maybe he's found some mud wallows of his own and he's doing some sneaky training in his speedos I'll have to try and find out from some of the sources that we know there I wouldn't be surprised if he is it's good weather and, and we know Byron loves a bit of mud wrestling and, and Timbavati was where he trained when he was the champion back in the day and so he's gone back to his roots and back to his training ground and I'm sure he's busy doing getting up to no good in the mud that side so I'll have to uh, I suppose put in some hours at some point and we'll have to see how it goes but we, we have to wait for Brenton and James and Scott to come back because they're also all part of this challenge as well so until such time as we've got them here we're going to have to uh, try and hold off a bit of practice although I suppose they can practice that side as well. Right, well, we're going to sit and enjoy our Ellie's because, well, why wouldn't you want to? It's just the most magical scene being here with them. And while we do that, our uh, Ellie's, I think, are still some more coming behind us. But Steph is back up and running and is still with his lions. So let's see if they're going to be mating a little bit more. <laughs> 